Hey Tripod fam, welcome back to another episode of Me, Faye, and Jay. Y'all, <laughs> today's so juicy and I'm just so excited to get into it. We are talking about dating DJ drama. while poly. Oh, cause this, this is some drama. Wanna know about it? Here you go. Stay tuned. You can hide it. So welcome back guys, welcome. Thank you for tuning in to Me, Bay, and Jay. Make sure that you subscribe to the channel and click that bell so you get all the notifications when we upload new videos. And we're gonna get into that uh, juicy marinated steak that Heather was just talking about. Called Dating While Polly. That's the steak. Called, called Dating While Polly. Yes, Heather, we, yes, we heard. <laughs> Thank you. Y'all, I have, I have a lot of questions for our audience, for our tripod fans. But we'll talk a little bit about us for now. See? Tripod fam, you know that we have described ourselves as not monogamous, but in a closed throuple, in a closed tripod. Mm -hmm. um, and you also know that it's also a journey, so things change. Yes. So we definitely have our own experiences, good and challenging. I don't want to say bad. Confusing? Confusing, maybe, experiences with dating. With my experience, I have been able to date um, the last couple of years. It's been a year and seven months. has turned into a consistent relationship. Said situation. If you all were tuned into another episode. Said situation. Said yeah, situation. we'll make it a bump. Yeah. So tell us about it, T. Tell yeah. us about, you know, dating while poly. What has that been like? What does that look like, first off? Like, what does dating while poly even look like? It's going to be different for everyone. Yeah. Sure. Like, 100%. Well, yeah, so, for your experience. Tea, yes, for yes. Tea. So, I would say... I don't even think of it necessarily as dating because we we went through so much turmoil in the beginning, so many challenges with understanding how the relationship was changing. It started out with, as one thing and it pretty quickly changed into something else. You know, so for us, at least as Letitia's partners navigating her dating, I, I would say it was different for both of us. For me, it was really the timeline for me that was like, okay, this has now changed. Okay, now you want to do this. Okay, that's a new boundary that we need to stretch. Let's put that on hold. Let's have some more conversations about it. And then if we get to the six-month line, we can talk about it again. And so we have consistently hit all of these landmarks, the three months, the six months, the nine months, the year anniversary, and now we're moving into a year and a half. And so it has been a consistent conversation about pushing boundaries. And I think that when I think back over the last year and a half, that's what I feel like was kind of your nemesis, Jeff. What's that? Was like, you give a little bit, and then it's another boundary to push. You give a little bit more, it's another boundary to push. Yeah. So where does it end? Where does it end? I think was was really how how you kept just feeling, I think, yeah. in general. So talk a little bit about you navigating, you know, Leticia's dating. Well, um, I think that for any man, you're gonna be, you're gonna go through a myriad of feelings and emotions about it, you know, even if you don't wanna admit it. And one of those is jealousy. Um, one of those is, is, is aggravation or anger. Um, and, you know, recognizing that it's coming 
from within yourself is really the key to getting over it, is the first step, right? So I had to make sure that I was being honest with myself about why I was feeling these things. And I had to have these conversations to, to reassure myself that, you know, this, this wasn't changing our foundation. Mm -hmm. It wasn't changing our life partnerships. Mm -hmm. You know, it was merely, um, I don't want to say an end to a, a means Making to an end, room. but yes. Mm -hmm. For additional desires. Yes. You know, and because experiences. Mm -hmm. You said, you know, anger, you said jealousy, you said aggravation, mm -hmm. but we still always felt compersion. Sure, we always you know, felt we, compersion. We always there's, felt there's something about Yeah. Yeah. Like, something well, you know, about, she's having a good time. Exactly, and, yeah. You know, and this isn't something that she gets to, that do, she with gets us to do with us in this often, way yeah. because it's a it's different. But she's enjoying herself. So like you know, we have to work on like what it is that puts us outside of our comfort zone. Again. Yeah. So I wasn't the only one that was having those kind of like emotional uh, highs and lows, if you will. You know, Heather had some. Of, she went through her own uh, processes. That's right. And um, you know, we we um, we tried to be as patient mm -hmm. and as communicative when maybe something pushed us outside of our boundaries yeah. or our our, our mm -hmm. comfort zone. Yeah. And then we would come back to the table and have a conversation with, about those kind of things. Mm -hmm. And we would come to some kind of resolution. So it, it, it's always this, uh, this, this, this frequency of conflict and resolution that we go through, right? Absolutely. Yes. A very good. It's a cycle. Yep. It's a cycle. Uh, dating while poly is a cycle of conflict and resolution. Yeah. That's very accurate. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it wasn't easy. It was challenging, you know. We had to get past some of our own emotional baggage and traumas and so on and so forth. And mm -hmm. as we do, mm -hmm. we were able to come out of it stronger and yeah. more in love with each other mm -hmm. than we were going into it. Sometimes it can still be mm -hmm. challenging and it's still something that we have to navigate with care mm -hmm. and sensitivity and also consciousness and empathy. And, and that's how we keep ourselves from becoming overwhelmed with negative emotions yeah. about whatever the situation is. That's sad presented. situation. Sad situation. So back to sad situation, T. Yes, that's how we navigated it um, for the most part. And what would you say for yourself in navigating it and us? Nav so we talk about being communicative, but it can be a chore to be communicative don't feel like talking about that topic again or like they didn't like we don't want to talk about this again and you know I was getting to a point that there were experiences that I wanted to have and that I felt as if I was being stifled or being controlled it, it took lots of conversations it took some different experiences for so for us, you know, for I think either of them to see, like, to put the shoe on their foot so that they could understand what I was going through, um, and it, yeah, it was there were there were there were difficult times. There were absolutely difficult times, but never was there a time where I thought, "Oh, I'm done with this." <laughs> it's, on either side. On, yeah, yeah. I'm never, never, never did I think yeah. that it was it was difficult, but it was it was necessary. And like Jeff said, we have come out absolutely stronger, mm -hmm. absolutely more in love than than we were, you know, a couple of months ago. Yeah, right. It's, it's, it's like you get you get to be even happier. Exactly. You know, like and I think Letitia really gets to look forward to these different experiences that she still gets to have, um, you know, with say a partner. And that's important to us. Mm -hmm. And it makes it feel less like it makes us feel better yeah. honestly because then we don't feel as selfish yeah. and we get to feel like you know yes we have fun in a very different way than the teacher has fun but now she gets to have fun in her own way mm -hmm. and we don't have to always feel like oh we wish tt would come and have this kind of fun with us because we recognize that she's having that kind of fun which is the kind of fun that she wants and that yeah. she began to desire because again it went from 16 mm -hmm. 
you know, to almost 40. So the things that you desire and the things that you consider to be fun and fulfilling all around, they change. Yeah, they shift. shift. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I think in adulthood and with adult relationships, when you when you get together as adults, sometimes a, a lot of time, you know, you shift with each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But when, when, yeah, when yeah, you try, right, yeah. exactly. You try, right, exactly. Um, it doesn't mean that you shift a hundred percent with yeah. each other, but uh, you know, most of the time, I think that that's the norm. Like you try to shift with each other, and when you are coming into it from being a, a children mm -hmm. in a relationship, obviously you don't even know who you are yet. Mm -hmm. You don't know what you like at eighteen and sixteen years old. So by the time you look up twenty years later you're a completely different person than you was at that point in your life For and, sure. and, and you need different things, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so that was one of the conversations that I had with myself that allowed me to let go of some of that uh, egoic control, yeah. you mm -hmm. know, and, 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 and allow Leticia to have uh, new experiences and, you know, adventures, if you will, mm -hmm. and still feel safety knowing that yeah. There's nothing that could happen that would change our core dynamic when it comes to that kind of stuff. We're solid. Yeah. So I think it's important that we, you know, we always want to look at both sides of the coin. We want to make sure that we're giving different perspectives from the situation because we know that all of our tripod family is going through very different things. Mm -hmm. And I know we always like to ask the question because we're curious, like what as much as you all want to know our experiences, we kind of want to know yours too because we recognize that it's so different. So if you're poly and you're dating, what has that been like with your partner or with the person that you're dating? What has that been? What does that navigation look like for you? So we've talked a little bit about what that navigation has looked like with said situation and how we've navigated it as her partner's on the other side of that, let's talk about what it looks like when you're even considering dating. When you recognize that, you know, I have connections with others in different ways and I'm interested in pursuing that. Well, first, that's honesty with yourself and honesty with your partners and you communicate about that. Because as I said before, you don't go from being monogamous to being non-monogamous overnight. It starts with conversation. But it's the fear of communication that I think that so many people have out there in the dating world that makes it feel like insurmountable. But I think that this is the perfect time to ask you all, what other questions do you have about dating while poly, especially with some of the experiences that we've given? Because we can definitely come back and do a round two. Shout out that. If you like this video, please make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the Me, Bay, and Jay channel, follow us on Instagram, on Facebook.